Now, in the, in the last five months, there have been two incredibly uh, momentous dates uh, for New Democrats. One is the election on May 2nd, and one is the death of Jack Layton, I think it was August 22nd. Well, describe for me your feelings. Go, I, I don't want to ask a feeling question. How, how has the landscape changed, first on May 2nd and then on August 22nd? How, how has the landscape changed within the party? It has been an incredibly difficult six months. Even the victories have been difficult. Um, May 2nd was incredible to see 103 MPs elected across Canada in a huge caucus from Quebec. But the difficult, the challenge that came with that wonderful victory was we sat so soon after the election. I mean, w within weeks. Normally you'd have a period of time for people to get orientated to their jobs, get their offices set up, hire people. So we went through those three weeks um, with just bare bones staff, with people, you know, six or seven people <laughs> huddling in one office to try and, and get some things done. Um, it was very difficult. Uh, we went through those three weeks. Uh, we then we then had our convention, our 50th anniversary convention in Vancouver. Another, Which is a big job in itself. Yes, another wonderful thing, but like that was a lot of work <laughs> to get through that. Uh, we flew back for the last week of the house and we were on Personally, I should just speak for myself, I felt like I was on death's door. <laughs> I was like, okay, I just got a few more days to get through this. And then Canada Post um, lockout, when the workers were locked out. Uh, so we had a caucus meeting on Wednesday filibuster. and said, we need to filibuster this. And we just reached deep inside of ourselves and found the energy and went 24 hours straight, 24 hours Talked straight. The election and the organizing new I offices know. and you know, all these new, we, new colleagues. I was, again, I'll only speak for myself, I was so exhausted, so exhausted, but it felt great. It felt great to just be able to do what it was we were supposed to do and do it as a team. I didn't even know the names of half of the caucus members, right? But I was there. I, I, applauded for them, I cried when they gave their speeches. When I would go home, when it wasn't my shift, because we broke it up into shifts, I would uh, turn on CPAC and watch from home. <laughs> you're like, I don't know who that is, but she's great. <laughs> so it was incredible, and you know, I spoke to Jack um, one night, we were both in the house at the same time, and, and he said, what an incredible opportunity for us to come together as a team. What an incredible team building exercise this has been. So huge highs that were difficult. And then um, a tra our tragic, tragic loss. Unbelievable. Yeah. How, how, is, how is the loss of Jack, how has this incredible experience affected you as a team, your, you and your caucus colleagues? Um, I'd say for a couple of weeks we were, um, um, what's the right, right way to put it, just sort of all in shell shock. You know, walking around. Um, when we came to Ottawa for the um, lion state of Jack's body and then uh, again to Toronto for the funeral, um, we were just so desperate to get here, just to, to be together. I mean, we didn't have a meeting or anything. It's not like we, you know, had an agenda and learned things and got that, you know, but we just needed to be in the same room together. Um, I did an interview before we got here and there was me and Peggy Nash and Paul Dewar. Peggy was in Toronto, Paul was here in Ottawa, I was in Halifax, and we were all piped in through the magic of television. And I had a little monitor uh, with me where I was in Halifax, and I could see Peggy and Paul, and I, was, I, and I said, I am so happy to see you. It is just really good to see you, even though we're not in the same room. Um, so we came together, um, we cried, we grieved, um, but people, you know, the, the first day went for Jack's Lion State, we were all in the same room together, and uh, we hugged and cried, but no one really talked. You know, it was just one of those things where we needed to be together, but there wasn't much to say. Um, in some ways, I, I suppose it brought us together um, and made us closer. Uh, it's a terrible, um, a terrible loss to go through as a, as a, as a, as a family, as a political family. Um, but, but we're doing okay, you know? And uh, Jack's letter was a really motivating thing for us, and we continue to talk about it.
constantly at our meetings, um, you know, even if you're just grabbing coffee with someone, uh, you know, we continue to reflect on it and talk about what it meant to us, what it means to us as individuals, but also as a party, as a caucus, uh, and we take it very seriously. Um, and Reverend Brent Hawks, when he said at the service, um, every once in a while we need to remind ourselves to ask, how are we doing, Jack? Um, we're doing that. It's very, it's very touching. Now, of course, the party is engaged in a leadership. Well, it's not a contest yet, or it's looking for a new leader. There's one, one to third candidate. Uh, and I, I don't, I'm not going to ask you about who you support or who mm -hmm. you prefer, but what do you think the party needs in terms of direction? I, I, I don't want you to paint the picture of, a, of, a, of a, the ideal leader, but where does it have to go? Well, you know what I think we need is I think we need this leadership race. Um, leadership races are incredible opportunities. They really are. And if you look at our history as a party, and you look at how leadership races have worked in the past, they are grassroots things. They are one member, one vote. Uh, we we re-inspire the membership we have. We draw new people in. Um, I'm thrilled that there are two candidates who put their names forward already. I'm thrilled that other people are considering. We need this. We need this now more than ever. Um, with Jack's loss, we need to take a look at ourselves as a party. We need to think about the direction we want to move ourselves into, and we need to consider that leadership that will bring us there. Um, this is an exciting time. I, as you know, have, uh, have decided that I'm not putting my own name forward. I only bring that up to say that that doesn't mean I'm not going to be involved. I'm going to be very engaged in this. Um, I don't know who I'm going to uh, support or who I'll ultimately vote for, but you know what I'm going to do? I am going to sell memberships and talk to people about how exciting it would be to be involved and to cast a ballot for the future leader of this party. I don't really care who they're, who they're going to vote for. It is an exciting time for us. And um, it's been a challenge because uh, so many of us at home and, and, and media have always looked at the uh, leadership races of other, of other parties that aren't like ours. Um, but ours are different. They are times for pause and reflection and reimagination and revisioning. Um, I think it's going to be a really good thing. Finally, um, uh, with all, amidst all the positives that you've named, uh, there's one uh, overwhelming uh, problem, which is that Harper has a majority government that's going to last 40 years, and he's going to be able to reshape Canada in, the, in a lot of fundamental ways. How, how, do you, how do you deal with that? How does the caucus deal with it? What do you think is the most effective thing the party can be doing in these 40 years uh, to slow down that train? Mm -hmm. This is our first week of the House sitting, and it's been incredible. Um, I turned, I sit beside Chris Charlton, our whip, I turned to her today and I said, oh my gosh, we have done a great job this week. We really have, in terms of holding uh, the Harper government to account, keeping their feet to the fire on all kinds of issues. It's been really impressive. It has been really impressive. But you know what? We can't do this by ourselves. So back to where I started with talking about community. When I say we right now, I mean all of us in Canada, we need to send a message to this government about what is acceptable and what is not acceptable, about what we treasure, about what we need to keep close, and what we do not want to be a part of the Canadian fabric. So it is going to take letters to the editor, panel discussions in our communities, it's going to take some brave elected officials who are going to bring forward some good legislation, but it's also going to take teachers teaching our kids how to be good citizens, it's going to take protest, it's going to take street theater, it's going to take experts coming up with good ideas and good solutions and think tanks bringing those things forward. It's going to take all of us in our communities working together. And if we can do that, sort of set the bar of this is where we draw the line, anything else is unacceptable, I think they'll come up. I have hope for that. You'll have to work hard for that. We'll all have to work hard for that, but I think we can. <laughs>